The last two sessions, this thing is not about your church. It's not about your denomination. Your church, your denomination is not the thing. It's not the thing. It's the kingdom of God that is what the thing, the body of Christ. That is what God is building. Say, so I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. It is not just one denomination. He's building the church across the globe. He's raising nobodies and making them somebodies. My friend, today, you might, you might look great, but maybe this young girl that you sit here, you see, you might then play her, but maybe the glory she carries is greater than yours. And you are going to need her. You are going to need a parents. You might need that. Today you might buy food for her. But maybe in a day. All her one month paycheck. Will be greater than all your years of labor. Under the sun. Maybe. So don't you think that you see. You see God sees your future. God knows you. That is why he put that neighbor in your life into your life that brother that sister into your life and it is for your own good they are your resource they are not your object for what attack so let's stop walking in the spirit of antagonism anti what do you call it what's the word antagonism that is which means mutual resistance opposition hostility the condition of being an opposing principle force or factor that you have become the agent who is opposing somebody's word progress the antagonism word spirit church let's put it out because the bible said do unto others as what you want others to want you assassinate people the place you come to a place in your life when you need people most that's when somebody will rise from nowhere and pay you hundredfold. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. God is not more. Whatsoever a man sows. That is what they will reap. So as you. Body of Christ. You begin to do the opposite of what God says. Jabez understood. And said God help me that I don't cause pain. In that people's life. Why? He could have caused pain. But don't forget. What a man so worth, that is what he wants. That is what he wants. Proverbs eleven twenty seven says, he says, he who, he who earnestly says good finds favor, but trouble will come to him who seeks evil. The merciful man does good for his own soul, but he who is cruel troubles his own flesh. Verse 18 says, the wicked man does deceptive work, but he who sows righteousness will have a sure reward. Hebrews 11. Say so you will have a sure reward. What do you want others to do to you? When you, feel, you realize that somebody's head do is not good, it's not an opportunity for you to laugh. Find a wise way to go to the present. Sister, come, come, come. Let me straighten up here for you. That straighten up, she will look good, maybe good than you. Better. You don't know tomorrow. That kindness you showed have gone in front of you. Someday she might be in a position that you will back is against the world. But that kindness, that kindness. Remember what uh, uh, close. Remember, remember what David, a shepherd boy, had nothing. Saul began to hunt his life. But you see, Jonathan, 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 Saul's son, did him good. Did him good. And when Jonathan had died and gone, he had a son called Mephibosheth. And Mephibosheth was not a normal son. He was a crippled man. Crippled, he cannot walk. When it's raining, somebody has to bundle him. Other than the rain will whip him. Now, how can even strong men with muscles can't even get food to eat? What can a, a, a cripple do in life? How can a cripple win? But when David became king, because of that kindness, he said, Is there anybody left in the house of Saul that I can give him? 
and show kindness to him. Is there anybody in the house of Saul? What Jonathan what did. Then when Jonathan Bephibosheth was brought before David, he said, how can the king bring such a dog into his house? I'm a dog. Nobody. But he said, today, your destiny has changed. Where I sit to eat, you will sit with the princess. You will sit with the dignities. You will eat bread from my table to the day you will die. For the sake of your father, Jonathan. Child of God, what God has done for you, he has put a seed of greatness in you. He has put a seed of greatness in me. My friend, my brother, my sister. You don't have to cause pain. Our glories are different. What you are supposed to become is different. What I'm supposed to become is what? Different. But you need my result. And I need what? Your result. According to 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 6. It says, therefore, godliness with contentment is a great gain. If you have not been made to be seven feet tall, don't envy the person who is what? Seven feet. Maybe you are three, four. You are three, four. When it gets to a place where the whole height is what? Seven, five. Do you notice the seven feet guy cannot what? Enter. So, you have your turn to show forth your glory. There's plenty of room on the stage of life for all of us to function, for all of us to break through, for all of us to get what we're supposed to get. So what you are, you are not a threat to me. What am I should not be a threat to you. What one pastor is should not be a threat to another world, pastor. What one denomination is, is not supposed to be a threat to what? We were not created to be one, the same. Look at the fingers. All the fingers are not one, the same. You can have five children. All of them are not be one, the same. All of them are uniquely unique. They are different. Don't look down on one another. We carry different world glories. And I conclude with this story. Maybe you walk to a picture the Holy Ghost showed me. You walk to Big Y. When you walk there, you went there with a little car. Little car can sit only just one passenger. But somebody also drove into the parking lot with an 18 wheeler truck. And they started grabbing things from the, the shelves. Maybe you appeared the tail of the line. The moment you saw the truck and the way they are loading the truck, you said to yourself, ah, don't be nothing left for what? For me. I'm here to let you, let you know. If you take one, one 18 wheeler truck to go to Big Y right now, load it full, they cannot empty what? The store. There still be plenty of goods what? Left. So if, if all that you can take, you can take, your capacity is just like this, there's room on earth for you to function. Don't be like the archers who bitterly grieved him. Because when you become like the archers and uh, you are sowing insult into other people's life, do you know what you are doing? All the blessings that were supposed to come to you, you will die before your time and who will inherit it? The Bible says when the wicked is cut off, the righteous will inherit the land. I'm your neighbor, you curse me. Not knowing that, in me, God is supposed to be what glorified. So the moment you became an enemy, you are digging your own grave. You will die, and I will take over yours. I will take over yours. In him we have